the Universal Declaration of Human Rights established that human rights are universal, indivisible, and inalienable. However, with international migration at an all time high, government officials, policymakers, non governmental organizations, researchers, as well as international agencies have only begun to consider the human rights dimension. Well, joining us now to have a conversation around this matter is Olushola Amuson, a social entrepreneur, speaker, and human rights advocate. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here. First, let me begin by asking you, in the time of COVID-19, how has this pandemic impacted uh, global migration? Well, um, like many people know, um, in 2019, um, we had um, more than 272 million people reported by the United Nations Office on Migration to have moved around the world for several reasons, um, mostly uh, based on uh, seeking economic opportunities. But as a result of the pandemic, uh, there was a, a rapid um, a decline in, uh, in that number. Uh, so more than half of that number were not able to move uh, around the world in the way they would have expected. But it's, it's important to note that um, now that things are getting better, um, more people are continuing with their migration decision all world over. I mean, it's it's stated that more than 3.5% of the entire world population is constantly on the move um, every year on year. But um, as a result of COVID, uh, there was a sharp decline in the year 2020. Uh, but towards the end of the year, again, we started seeing governments around the world opening up their migration programs and um, furthermore um, expressing the importance of this very, very important human activity, which has significant contribution to economic growth and development. Okay, Olushala, it's a novel idea to refer to the brain drain as gain. Um, mostly we're used to people referring to issues around migration as some sort of a, a nuisance that needs to be checked. So enlighten us to the benefits of brain drain. Well, uh, it's important to understand the fact that to maintain global economic balance, there is a need uh, for the movement of goods and services and people across the world. Um, countries around the world have evaluated the sum total of their uh, entire migration space to be worth more than $650 billion to economies around the world, with some of the first world countries being the biggest recipients of this. But even in more recent times, data has um, emerged about the value of uh, the Nigerians in diaspora, for example, where more than $23 billion was uh, remitted back home for Nigeria alone in the year 2019, which also accounted for at least half of the entire revenue from oil for the same year. So around the world, if you think about how India has sent so many engineers to the United States and to Europe, whether it was intentional or it was just these people seeking economic opportunities, the fact that these people can remit uh, resources, money, um, take money back home to their home country to headquarter as part of GDP per capita, essentially what you can see there is a net gain rather than a brain drain. And um, when continents like Africa and countries like Nigeria begin to understand the overall objective of this, then we will be more conscious about empowering young people and the entire workforce to be able to attract global value, whether they choose to stay at home and work remotely or whether they choose to move to other countries around the world to seek similar economic benefits. So across the world, industry is worth over $650 billion. And the question really is, how much of that is coming to us as a continent? So we need to begin to change the lens with which we view migration. People from the late 1980s, even from the 60s, have been moving outside Nigeria, from Nigeria, regardless of what the concerns were about security, to seek educational opportunities, to seek work opportunities. And when the government supports, when the Ministry of Foreign Affairs partners with enterprises, with nonprofit organizations, with governments of nations, to strategically position our people, the people of Nigeria and the people of the African continent, as an export, an human capital export, we begin to uh, scratch the surface and reap the benefits of uh, this huge $650 billion market. 
Well, I'm glad you mentioned the security aspect of this because more and more migrants are viewed as financial and demographic boarding to countries of destination. But there's also that contentious security uh, concept to it. So migration is a human right, but is it a threat to security of states? Yeah, so for, for the host states, um, there are structures and guidelines that have been set up by different countries. And particularly when migration is legal, it, fall, it falls within the quarters that have already been planned for by their Ministry of Home Affairs or their Homeland Security. So essentially, in the case of the United States, you would see that the uh, United States immigration has policies and guidelines around how to attract important talent from all corners of the world into their ecosystem. So when migration is legal and is towards seeking newer economic benefits and opportunities, most times it's already accounted for by the host country and concerns around security are very minimal. On the flip side, however, when it's a huge refugee situation, illegal migration, people crossing borders unaccounted for and all of that, this can uh, um, um, definitely contribute to uh, the state of insecurity in any host country. So what we want to begin to demystify now is to begin to show people that, yeah, and governments as well, advocate with governments that if you provide clearer pathways for people to move across the world and into your country with the clear guidelines available for people, there will be less attention on illegal migration. And of course, you will be able to manage every security concern uh, that stems from that. Okay, thank you for making that distinction, because I was going to ask you about the mindset of the man who is seeking greener pastures, whether it's beneficial to the host country. But um, I just want to ask you about a certain observation someone made that those who are seeking to migrate to greener pastures uh, want to reap where they did not sow. Um, could you maybe uh, you know, speak to that and perhaps say, should we not have more of our energies focused towards making our home country habitable and more hospitable to people who are emigrating so that we have more of us at home um, just because that's the end game. So, so thank you so much. The first place I will start is that, first of all, we're all citizens of Earth and we are all humans. Hello. And the fact that there were boundaries that were set up uh, by um, countries in the name of uh, migration uh, policies and guidelines and visa uh, does not make us forget that first of all we belong to Earth as citizens yeah, of Earth, it's really nice and the, the nomadic nature you know, of humans generally enables us to understand that like as shows, we are, we exactly are people it. move across the world and across borders. Now, what you must remember is that some of the people who built some of the greatest countries on Earth were not originally natives of those countries. Some of their biggest adventures of humanity to go to space were created, you know, in, in uh, uh, NASA and in other uh, headquarters around the world by migrants who moved to that country to develop uh, the scientific frontiers of a country that is ready at such a time. Now, it's a valid argument to say that why don't we continue to stay at home and build the value that we need to build? But when we remember that our collective destiny is to advance the agenda of humanity, then we we'll remember that regardless of where we find ourselves or where we choose to go or where we go to enable our biggest aspirations, we will still be doing humanity a favor to advance the cause you know, of our human species, whether we work as scientists or work as engineers contributing to whatever mm. nations we find ourselves. Uh, the real question okay. here is, as a doctor, as a mm. neurosurgeon, or as a medical researcher, how much value can you add you. when you are in a country that there is not so much uh, um, value to Indeed. Uh, um, some of these Mr. fields? Mr. You know? that's the much we can take. Although there's another flip side to the argument to say, when you have your low-skilled and skilled living in your country, then there should be immediate and long-term effects on the country of departure. But thank you so much.